Hello, this is Greg from Structure Toolkit. And in this video, we're going to be going through getting started with Structure Toolkit for the first time. The main topics we're going to go through are setting up a default header for all your computations, showing you how you can save all your projects, how to manage your files in the project tree, and also going through some interface options, which will hopefully make Toolkit easier to use. The final thing we will go through are printing and exporting options for your project. Refer to the timestamps on the screen if you want to skip to any of the sections. So when you first open up Toolkit, you will be greeted with this interface. In the center you will have all the design modules you can choose from. To the top we have the menu bar, which acts in a similar way to many of the Microsoft Office programs. And finally to the left we have the project tree, which we will get into later. So the first thing we're going to go through is setting up a default header. This can be found in the setup tab at the top. Here you can see a box with some information in it. This box represents the header that will appear at the top of all your comp pages. And what we can do now is set some default information in it. This default information is the information we want on every new project to start with. This will usually be in the form of your company logo and some word prompts for what you want in each text box for each specific project. So first we will change the logo. This can be done by either clicking the select logo button on the left or by clicking logo not set inside the box. This will bring up a file explorer interface where you can select your company logo as an image and import it in. What you can do now is change these text inputs to whatever suits you like so. Once you're happy with what you have, click the Save as Default button to the right. This means that every time I open a new project, this is the default information that will now be filled in. This way you won't need to re-import your logo and stuff every time. The next thing we're going to be looking at is saving a project. As default, any files you open before saving a project will be saved in an autosave location. For demonstration, I'll just open a roof beam design. If I were then to close the program and click no to save in changes, I would lose the file. If your program somehow crashes before you save, there will be an autosave recovery file but as a best practice, you should always save the project before starting any designs. To save the project, you go to the project tab at the top and click save as. In the future, if you forget, uh, this dialog box tells you what to do. So we'll click OK. This will then open a file explorer window where you can then go to your desired location and save your project. In this case, I'll save it here as getting, getting started. Once done, the project will be saved. And from now on, anything done inside the project will be automatically saved. So there's no need to click save after creating any designs or making any changes. It does it all itself. Next is the project tree which can be found on the left of the screen. And it's where you manage all your files within a project. As you can see, the roof theme I opened earlier is shown there under a folder or section called unallocated. If I right click it, I get a variety of options. However, it is missing the option to delete or rename it, which you can do for sections you create. The same goes for the file itself. Every design you open will appear in this project tree and acts as a sort of simple folder management system. As default, you will start with just an unallocated and trust section. If you don't care about file management, this may be all you need. Alternatively, you can create your own sections to manage different parts of your project. To create a section, simply right click in the project pane and click add section. First section I'll create will be called wind. You can then add as many additional sections as you'd like. I will just create a roof section for the roof beam design I have. You'll notice though that my roof beam isn't in the roof section. To move a file, just click and drag it where you want. For the files, make sure that you're dragging it 
in front of the section, not behind. Otherwise, you won't be able to put it in. You can do a similar thing for the sections themselves. Um, just click and drag and make sure they're behind the folder for the sections. Like so. You'll probably also notice that the roof section is currently yellow. This means it is the active section and any new designs I open will go inside it. For example, I'll open another roof beam design and you can see it go into the roof section. To change active sections, double click on a sections folder. Now if I open a wind load design, it should go into the wind section. Like so. Next we will look at some interface options. Firstly, the general menu appearance can be switched into dark mode depending on your preference. This can be done in the options menu found under file, options, interface and then under color theme drop down there's a dark option. There's also a few other themes you can play around with if you'd like. For now we'll just select dark. Click apply. As you can see it's changed a lot of the menu background into a much darker color which can be a lot easier on the eyes. In that same options menu there are also a few other features we'll look at. One being the feature color which is kind of the secondary color of a structural toolkit. So if we change that to a blue you can see the bar on the left changed and then a lot of few other colors around the program will also be that secondary color of blue. That options menu also has a few other colors you can change. Uh, have a play around with it in your time. Uh, you can make toolkit look pretty different depending on what you're doing. For this video though, I'll keep everything in the default interface. So to do that, we go back to that options menu, click on light, and then click the X here to reset that feature color. Another interface option is the scale of the design windows, which can be altered down in the bottom right with it, the zoom option. As you can see, that's zooming in or zooming out of the design window. Also, for people who have a big enough monitor, you can also split pane multiple designs. What that means is have multiple designs on the same screen. To do that, we right click at the top on this wind analysis design module and then select one of the send to pane options. In this case I'll use send to right pane. This feature can be useful when using linked modules or when using a structural toolkit analysis and a structural toolkit base module at the same time. But we'll go through those things in more detail in a later video. To reset the split pane to just one design, double click on the top of the border of one of them. final thing we'll look at in this video is printing and exporting your project. Before printing anything, it's best to verify the printer toolkit will print to is correct. This can be found under the project tab and in the settings drop down here. This will show you your currently set printer for standard structure toolkit documents, being the top printer, and analysis structure toolkit documents, being the bottom printer. If these printers are not correct for you, click the set button and choose the correct printer. The easiest way to print and export your project is just by clicking the print all or export all options on the project tab. There are also further options for printing individual documents or just currently open documents scattered about the program. For example, right click in the module tab at the top or even click in one of the buttons at the top left which will just print your current page. There are also some print and exports options in the document tab that refer to your currently viewed document. However, sometimes the default way of printing and exporting doesn't always give you all the pages you need, or it prints things you don't need to print. As a general rule, if you click export or print all, it will export all your document's last viewed pages. For many modules like roof and floor beams, there's only one design page, so this shouldn't cause any issues. However, some modules like the steel member design, have many pages to choose from, as you can see at the bottom here. 
As it is, exporting all the documents will only export the front design page of this steel member design, as that was the last one I viewed. If you want to print or export more than one page of this member design, what we want to use is the printables feature. This can be found under the document tab. And by clicking the printables button with the document you want to modify open. From here we get an interface to select the pages we want to print. In this case I'll select just the design and design 2 pages. And click apply. A printables icon will now show next to the document in the project tree to signify that I have modified its printing settings. If I were then to use the print or export all option, or even the print open documents, this printable setting will be applied to the steel member design. If you have multiple steel member designs that you also want to have these printable settings on, you can do this by using the drop down on the printables button and clicking apply to same. This will then give you some options to apply your steel member design printable settings to other steel member design printable settings either for all documents in the project or for just some specific sections. The second important feature is the ability to set a whole document as not printable. This can be done by right clicking the document in the project pane and selecting not printable. And if the export or printable option is used, this will set a not printable icon on the document. And if the export or print all option is used, this document will not be printed. However, this option doesn't do anything for the other printing options. Finally, if you want to stamp your exported PDFs with page numbers, you can set this up as an option when exporting all your documents. This can be done through the drop down on the project tab with export all. First you want to click the setup stamps to configure the way the stamps are being used. This interface gives you a range of options to play with and some presets if you're not keen on messing with the numbers too much. Generally the first preset does the job. But if you're not happy, you can modify the values yourself. Once done, click Apply, and the setup stamps are now set. In the future, you can just tick the stamp option on without having to use the second option. To show these features in action, we will have two steel member designs that we're going to print, and another one that will be set as not printable. The first design will have nothing modified to it, and the second design will have two pages set as printable in a similar way to how we did earlier. We also have stamps set up on. Next, we will click Export All. The program will now go through every document and export them to PDF. As you can see, only the first two documents were printed and they've been put in their own PDF. And now we get to save the entire combined PDF as whatever you'd like. In this case, I'll just leave it as printing. Next, it'll ask us how we want to apply the stamps. It should have the same settings we had from before. I'll just click Apply. Go OK. And the export is done. If I now open the stamped PDFs, you'll see that the first page is just the steel member design one with the first design page. Second page is the steel member design 2 with the design page and then also our second page I chose being the alpha M page. And as you can see that the steel member design 3 wasn't printed at all because it was set as not printed. That about covers all you need to know to get started with the Structure Toolkit. The next video will cover a variety of useful features Toolkit has which should help increase your efficiency in designing with the Structural Toolkit. Feel free to check out our website and our other videos for more tutorials and help with using this software. If you have any questions, please contact our support team via email or by calling us. You can find our details on our website or in the description below. Thanks for watching.